Our lesson today is Jesus met Nicodemus from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. And here's our verses for today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John three sixteen and 17. Let's say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John 3, verses 16 through 17. Why do we need to be born again? Well, we're going to learn about that in this lesson. Now let's read John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17 from the Bible. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, You must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, or whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and you believe not, how should ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So that's John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now let's look into this account. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews, that is, and he was a religious leader who taught God's law. And he was a member of the Sanhedrin, a Jewish governing body. Nicodemus was part of an exclusive group of religious elite who appeared to be moral men. He held to the belief that if a person was a law-abiding Jew, then he would be accepted by God. Jesus, on the other hand, was a carpenter. So the religious teachers likely assumed he didn't know theology. But they had seen Jesus' miraculous signs in Jerusalem. They had seen him do miracles. Jesus had traveled to Jerusalem for the Passover. Do you remember what the Passover is? Remember, as the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, God told them that on a, this certain night, they needed to put blood on their doorposts and that God would pass through the land and the houses that had the blood on the doors, 
he would pass over those houses. But the ones that didn't have the blood, he would go in and the firstborn would die. So Jesus had traveled to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And one night, a man came to see Jesus. The man's name was Nicodemus. Nicodemus, like we said, was a Pharisee, and that means he was a religious man. He studied and taught God's law and tried very hard to obey the law. Well, Nicodemus had heard about Jesus, and he wanted to know more. Master, there's a Pharisee here to see you. He's a ruler of the Jews, a very important man. Why does he come at night? Is he embarrassed to be seen talking to Jesus? I will go and talk with him privately. Rabbi, or master, or teacher, Nicodemus was right. Jesus was a teacher, and he was very good at teaching. Jesus had come from heaven. Master, we rulers of the Jews know that you're a teacher come from God. For no man could do the miracles that you do except God be with him. And Jesus replied, Unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. Born again? Now Nicodemus was very confused. He thought that keeping all of God's laws was how a person got into heaven. Born again? This didn't make sense to Nicodemus. Are you telling me that I should enter into my mother's womb and come out a second time? No, The flesh gives birth to flesh, and the spirit gives birth to spirit, Nicodemus. Hear what I tell you. You must be born again. How does this new birth come about? Nicodemus asked, how can anyone be born when he is old? The spiritual birth of which I speak is mysterious, like the wind, but we experience it just the same. You must have the birth from above if you are to enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I tell you, a man cannot enter God's kingdom unless he is born of water and the spirit. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. That means that when a baby is born, he gets physical life from his parents, and physical life doesn't last forever. But the Spirit gives people spiritual life so they can live with God forever. The wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone who's born of the Spirit. Jesus said, Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it listeth, and you hear the sound thereof. But you cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. We don't see the wind, do we? But we feel it, and we see what it does. We see how it moves the trees, and how it blows our hair, and blows in our face. Well, Jesus was saying, when a person is born again, you can't see it, but it happens, and it's real. How is this possible? Are you a teacher of Israel, and you don't know these things? Truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know. And we give witness of what we have seen, and yet you do not accept it. Jesus told him, You're a teacher in Israel, and you don't understand what I'm saying? This is the truth. We talk about what we know, and we tell others about what we have seen. But you don't believe what I'm telling you. If I've spoken to you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you about the things of heaven? When I tell you about things I've seen on earth and you don't believe me, how will you believe what I say about the things I've seen in heaven? For no one has gone into heaven except for the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. No one has ever gone up into heaven except he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man. And then Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, So must I be lifted up, Nicodemus. But they were dying from snake bite because they had sinned against God. When they looked at the brass serpent, they were instantly healed. You can find that account in Numbers chapter 21. So let's go back to Numbers 21 in the Old Testament to see what Jesus is talking about. God had sent Moses to lead the people out of their bondage in Egypt, and they were wandering in the wilderness. They hadn't believed they could take the promised land. 
Now they were to wander for 40 years in the wilderness. And God had provided for his people, but the journey was long and the Israelites became impatient. They grumbled and complained to God and Moses. The people were still receiving manna every day in the wilderness. Remember God rained down food from heaven for them every morning? But they complained about the food God gave them. Why have you led us out here from Egypt to die in the wilderness? We have no bread or water. The food we have is no good. God gave it to them. It was the manna. Then God sent poisonous snakes against the Israelites. And the snakes bit many of them, and many of the Israelites died. The people realized they had sinned by complaining to God. God punished them because he knew their dissatisfaction was a sign of a bigger issue, a heart problem, a sin problem. They stopped believing that God was good. In their hearts, the Israelites believed the same lie that rattled Eve in the garden. Maybe God isn't interested in giving us what is best. Maybe he's holding out on us. So they told Moses, Ah, we know we've sinned. Please ask God to take the snakes away. The Israelites repented. They wanted Moses to ask God to take away the snakes. So Moses interceded for the people. He prayed, Oh God, don't destroy these people. He spoke to God for them. And God provided a solution. God didn't take the snakes away, but he made a way for the people to be saved from the poison. And God told Moses to make a snake image and put it on a pole. And when anyone who's bitten looks at it, he will recover. Look and live. Moses made a bronze snake, just as God directed him, and he mounted it on a pole. And whenever someone was bitten, he looked at the bronze serpent, and he recovered. Even when the Israelites sinned against God by not trusting him to take care of them, God still loved them. He had to punish their sins, but he also helped heal them. The Israelites faced a huge problem because of their sin, and God sent snakes to punish them, and anyone who was bitten could look at the serpent on the pole and not die. Because of our sin, we face a huge problem. We're separated from God, and we deserve to die. Remember Jesus said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must I be lifted up. Nicodemus said, but they were dying from snake bite because they had sinned against God. And when they looked at the brass serpent, they were instantly healed. Yes, and even now all men are dying from the snake bite of sin. But this time I will be lifted up for all men to see. And those who were bitten in the wilderness were delivered by looking upon the brass serpent. And those who are bitten by sin will find deliverance by believing in me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He who believes on me has everlasting life, but he who does not believe on me is already condemned. Nicodemus. So you're saying that the new birth is the only cure for sin and that you're going to be placed on a pole to provide deliverance? When will this new birth occur? And Jesus, after I have been lifted up for all men to see. What was Jesus talking about? God put Jesus in the position of the snake. Jesus was lifted high on the cross. So Jesus invites us to turn to him and to lift our eyes to the cross. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. Because of our sin, we face a huge problem. We're separated from God and we deserve to die. But anyone who looks to Jesus on the cross and trusts in him will be saved and be made right with God. Jesus, the sinless Savior, became sin for us and was lifted up on the cross in our place. We must do nothing but look to him to be saved. God didn't send his son to declare the world guilty, but to save the world. And anyone who believes in him is found not guilty. But anyone who doesn't believe in him 
is guilty already. Without Jesus, we are spiritually dead. Sin separates us from God. When people believe in Jesus and are born again, they receive new life and become God's children. Jesus offers new life to those who trust in him for salvation. So why do we need to be born again? Because of sin, we're spiritually dead. But Jesus came to give us new life. So where is John 3.16? It's in John chapter 3. And who was Jesus talking to? He was talking to Nicodemus, a religious leader. And he told him, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now let's have some review questions. What was Nicodemus's job? Do you remember what was Nicodemus's job? He was a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews. Next, when did Nicodemus go to see Jesus? What time of the day was it? That's right, it was at night. What did Jesus say has to happen for someone to see God's kingdom? Remember, Nicodemus thought he was really righteous. He was keeping all the laws. But Jesus told him something needed to happen. He must be born again. Did Nicodemus understand what Jesus said? What do you think? Did he understand? No, he didn't understand. He said, how can I enter the second time into my mother's womb and be born again? How does Jesus know what heaven is like? How would Jesus know what heaven's like? Because Jesus came from heaven, right? How did God show his love to the world? That's right, he gave his only begotten son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Why did God send his son into the world? He sent his son into the world so that the world might be saved through him. Why do we need to be born again? Because of sin, we are spiritually dead. But Jesus came to give us new life. Remember, you must be born again. You can never be good enough. You need to look to Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. He became sin for us. He was crucified. He shed his blood and he rose again so that we might have everlasting life. Hi everyone, my name is Megan. And I'm Jessie. Megan, guess what? My aunt had her baby. My new cousin was born. That's great, Jessie. Babies are so much fun. They are so soft and, and cuddly and sweet. Hey, Megan, wouldn't it be fun if I could be a baby again? <laughs> I don't know, Jessie. You can do a lot of fun things that a baby cannot do. Yeah, I guess you're right. My new baby sister just cries and sleeps and eats. Maybe it is good to be a big kid. <laughs> In today's Bible story, a man named Nicodemus went to talk to Jesus. Jesus told Nicodemus that he must be born again. <gasps> like a little baby? Not quite, Jesse. A baby gets life from his parents when he is born. Jesus was talking about a different kind of life. Life with God that lasts forever. Let's listen to our Bible story. One night, when Jesus was in the city of Jerusalem, a man named Nicodemus came to visit Jesus. Nicodemus was a religious man. He studied God's laws and tried very hard to obey it. Nicodemus wanted to know more about Jesus. Teacher, Nicodemus said, we know you came from God. You are a teacher and you do miracles. God must be with you. Nicodemus was right. Jesus was a good teacher. Jesus came to earth from heaven and God was with him. 
Jesus decided to teach Nicodemus an important lesson. Jesus said, a person cannot see God's kingdom unless he is born again. Nicodemus was confused. He thought that a person got to go to heaven if he was good and obeyed all of God's laws. Jesus' words did not make sense. How can anyone be born again when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Nicodemus knew that babies are small when they are born. How can a grown man be born again? That sounded awfully silly. Jesus told Nicodemus that when a baby is born, the baby gets life from his parents. But that kind of life does not last forever. Nobody lives forever. Jesus said that people can get life from God. This kind of life means people can live with God forever. Nicodemus still did not understand. How is it possible to get life from God? Nicodemus asked. Jesus told Nicodemus, when I tell you about things we have seen on earth, you do not believe me. Will you believe me when I tell you about things I have seen in heaven? Then Jesus reminded Nicodemus of the time when God's people disobeyed God and got sick. The people were healed when they looked at the bronze snake on the pole. Jesus said that he would be raised up like the snake so that everyone who believes in Jesus will be healed from their sin and have eternal life. Jesus told Nicodemus about God's great plan. Jesus said, God loved the world so much that he sent his one and only son to save the world. Everyone who believes in him will not die, but will have eternal life. Jesus was talking about himself. He is God's one and only son. Nicodemus wanted life with God, but he could not do anything to earn it. Eternal life is a gift. God showed his love by sending his one and only son to rescue people from sin. Everyone who believes in him receives God's gift of eternal life through Jesus. While Jesus was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in him as they saw the miracles he performed. But Jesus did not trust himself to them because he knew them all. There was no need for anyone to tell him about them because he himself knew what was in their hearts. There was a Jewish leader named Nicodemus who belonged to the party of the Pharisees. One night, he went to Jesus. Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher sent by God. No one could perform the miracles you are doing unless God were with him. I am telling you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God without being born again. How can a grown man be born again? He certainly cannot enter his mother's womb and be born a second time. I am telling you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. A person is born physically of human parents, but is born spiritually of the spirit. <laughs> Do not be surprised because I tell you that you must all be born again. The wind blows wherever it wishes. You hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. It is like that with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can this be? You are a great teacher in Israel, and you don't know this. I am telling you the truth. We speak of what we know and report what we have seen. Yet none of you is willing to accept our message. You do not believe me when I tell you about the things of this world. How will you ever believe me then when I tell you about the things of heaven? And no one has ever gone up to heaven except the Son of Man who came down from heaven. As Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the desert, 
In the same way, the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to be its judge, but to be its savior. Those who believe in the Son are not judged. But those who do not believe have already been judged because they have not believed in God's only Son. This is how the judgment works. The light has come into the world, but people love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds are evil. Those who do evil things hate the light and will not come to the light because they do not want their evil deed to be shown up. But those who do what is true come to the light in order that the light may show that what they did was in obedience to God.